Hi guys, happy Friday. Again, I think it's four weeks today, isn't it? That we've been uh, stuck inside, not working for me. Um, so today I'm gonna show you a bit about your base, going through primers, concealers, foundation, setting powder, how to contour, blush, highlight. Um, just working on giving you some tips on that. Um, so yeah, here goes. So first of all, we'll start with primers. I've been through a few of these on some of my other videos. God, I tipped my eyebrows again last night, they're so dark. Um, so obviously it depends on your skin type, on how your skin is. Generally, if you get a little bit oily, you can get um, primers that help you minimize your pores around your nose, um, on your forehead, on your chin. Um, usually your pores tend to come to about this area. Um, so if you get a bit dry on your cheeks, you don't actually have to put the poor ones all over. You can just focus on those areas. Um, you can also get like mattifying sticks. So that's like a stick. This is um, a Smashbox one where you can just put that down the area. Poor Professional by uh, Benefit is a quite a long going one or Smashbox are good for their primers as well. Um, and then if you've got more dry skin or more dull complexion and you just want to give yourself a nice little glow, you've got ones that are more eliminating, anything that's more glowy. So that's the MAC Prep and Prime that I always use. It's a good old favourite of mine. I've stocked this for ages. I always rebuy it. Um, so for me today, I'm going to go for, for a change, I'm going to go for the stick because I get a little bit um, oily on this T-zone. I'm going to go down my nose, around this area here, and then I'm going to go a bit on my chin. And I'm just going to rub that in a little bit with my finger. So I'm going to use that on those areas to keep that matte. And then I'm going to go for my MAC one, just one pump. I'm just going to put this on my cheeks. And I'm going to let that settle in. It's got a nice little glow to it, a little bit of shimmer. I hope you can't see it on my hands. So let that settle in. Then next, I mean, I always personally, a lot of people go straight onto their foundation base then, but I still like to do a bit of corrective work with concealers before I put my foundation on and then I go back to it after as well. So when it comes to concealers, you get, um, obviously you get the thicker ones, um, these actually come in little individual pots. These, this is MAC Studio Finish, which is really nice. Um, they're good for covering spots. If you've got, if you're old and you've got age spots, um, pigmentation, you know, things like that. If you've got scars from spots, um, they're good for covering that. Um, Estee Lauder do this little cream pot as well, the double wear pot. It's quite a good coverage. Uh, but round the eyes, generally, your skin is much softer, um, much thinner. And if you just want to use it to lift out dark circles uh, and lift out shadows on your face, you're best to go a little bit lighter with the texture, which is where you get things like Touche Clout. I don't know if you know that. It's a really popular, it's been going for many years, um, Youth Saleron, gold little pen. And then most companies do their little copy versions of it. I did, I've got one here. Oh, this is a cheap um, collection uh, eliminating touch. It is, it's like four quid. It's their copy one. Um, but yeah, I mean, every brand sort of does them really. So also you get ones with the little spongy tips on them, like these. These are normally a little bit lighter in texture. I uh, got the Elf one recently. I'm really liking that actually. Um, I've used so many. I always go from MAC Pro Longwear is, is quite a nice one, a good coverage. NARS Creamy Concealer, that's another good one. I've used that. Um, it doesn't last me very long on customers, unfortunately, and it's quite expensive. Charlotte Tilbury, they do a nice one. Uh, so where to put it? So I'm going to show you firstly where you're going to highlight with a slightly lighter texture one. I'm going to use my e.l.f. one. So I'm going to do like three dots underneath my eyes. And I'm going to do a little bit on the top. And then I'm going to use a little bit down the side of my nose. Got a bit of shadow there and then a little bit on my chin under my lip, I get a bit of shadow there. Um, don't overload the product too much. When I watch other tutorials and lots of teenage girls that won't be told anyway and they can take makeup really heavy anyway, you don't need to overload the product and often it can end up sitting in your lines. So don't put too much on. 
Um, when it comes to putting it on, if you've got a brush, that's fine. You can use your fingers. You can also get these little beauty blenders where you just dampen them a little bit first. And they're quite good for getting right into that area. So you can just pat it along. So whatever works for you. I'm so used to using my fingers or my, my concealer brush. So I'm just going to use my fingers at the moment. I'm going to put a little bit on my brow. So anywhere where you get dark, don't forget this area in here often gets quite dark as well. And after I've, you know, if, I've, if I'm going to do eyeshadow, after I've done all my makeup at the end, I will often go back and add more around my eyes just to double check. But you don't need to overload too much. Same as if, you know, if you end up getting lines down here, don't need too much product there under the chin so that's where you put a lighter textured one just to lift out the shadows i also get a bit of a line a bit of a wrinkle here that i like to put a little bit there and then i've got a couple of spots so i'm going to go in for the one that's slightly thicker texture i'm going to actually do the um estee lauder double wear concealer but i'm really warming it up another one is um Benefit Boing is quite a popular one, but they're so thick you really have to warm them up. They're great for covering spots. I've got a fresh one appearing on my chin today, and I've got a fresh one right there. So colour wise, just slightly, slightly lighter. I mean, if you're gonna um, if you're gonna carry what these are quite handy these little ones to carry around in your handbag, and then during the day if you're out and about. If um, you're noticing your spots redeveloping in your face, you can, if you get one that's nearer to your skin tone for that, you can just keep it in your bag and just pat it on during the day. Okay, so that's just a bit of, bit of corrective under there. If you suffer with redness, if you've got rosacea, um, you can get the green, or you can get the concealers, you can get the liquids. You go really sparingly with those because um, you can really overload and they just look funny under the skin so really sparingly with those um, and the green just counteracts the red um, neutralizing the color so I'm going to go in with my favorite that suits my skin tone foundation which is studio fix by Mac in NW30 and I'm going to just I haven't got a pump on it I'm going to just get a bit out of the cotton bud now when it comes to foundations, I've been doing makeup since the year 2000 when it was even before the basic foundation brushes and we just had fingers or sponges and we were all, we all sold it as use a sponge, um, like the old type sponges and then we went off the sponges and it went on to like these type of foundation brushes and then over the years, some people found they'd get a little bit of lines and they'd still end up using their fingers to, to get rid of the lines. Uh, and then we went on to back to beauty blenders, sponges, and you dampen them. Uh, and now they do buffing brushes. This is a popular one, which is quite reasonable. It's a real techniques one, a stippling brush. So um, yeah, they're called stippling brushes. You can get buffing brushes. Um, so find what suits you. I personally like to apply mine, I always change actually, I've done all these over the years um, and I was on the stippling brush for quite a long time and now I've gone on to the buffing brushes um, and I just prefer that myself. So find what suits you, I'm going for a little bit warmer than my, my face is quite pale at the moment but I want to go a little bit warmer. So this is NW30 which probably I'm 25 at the moment. But as long as it blends all right, I just fancy a little bit of colour in my face today. So I'm just putting a bit all over. The best thing it really is to apply more the centre and then blend it outwards. So you're not applying too near the jawline. You're just blending it out towards and always take it down here. It drives me mental. I don't know how people get that line when you don't. Oh my God, how do you actually do that? I don't actually know how you do that. Honestly, don't. Years ago when I worked in the shops, some of the bloody girls on the counters were just as bad. No wonder people get scared to go to people on the counters, even though I was one of those people. 
my makeup didn't look that bad. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit more. So if I was going out, this is quite a buildable foundation, this one, because my skin's quite a combination. It's a really, it's kind of like a satin sort of finish. It's not, it's not completely matte, which I don't want these days. I used to wear double wear when I was younger, which is a really matte Estee Lauder one. Doesn't particularly photograph well, but it's a great coverage and it was really hard to get away from a good coverage when my skin was greasy and spotty and, you know, I wanted to be just nice skin. Um, so I went off of that and I found this suits me. Um, you can build it. So if I go out, I normally put two layers on I normally and for my brides as well, because it doesn't look cakey. After I, I'll do the base first, after I've done their eyes, I will go back and rebase again before I do all the contour, blusher and highlighter. So you can build it. You'll just need to find a foundation that suits your skin type. I like this because it still gives me a glow. It's not too dewy and it's not going to slip off. Um, but yeah, Charlotte Tilbury's a lovely one. NARS um, is a lovely one. There's so many out there. So just have a, have a go. Find what suits you. So that's just the one coat of that. And the colour actually is quite nice. I, the other one I've been wearing is quite light. Um, so that's just the one coat of that at the moment. I'm then going to put a little bit of a setting powder on it uh, again you can get many of these i'm using a translucent one and i'm brushing it on rather than using one of these little puffs often if you use these it goes a little bit cakey um and it can just sit a little bit you can also use blend um, beauty blenders but i personally prefer just to brush it on um just so it's a little bit more natural and i tend to for me just use use it on this t-zone if you're someone that suffers with drier skin you might be completely put off by powder that's fine if you like more of a dewy complexion you don't need to use it but for me i'm gonna do it just on this t-zone now always go down on the face if you do all this you um you get the powder sitting under the hairs on your face which makes your face look more hairy so just go down Okay, that's a little bit of that. And then I'm going to do a bit of contouring. Oh, what should I contour with today? I've got so many things. Um, maybe... I might just do it with a... I'll do it with Hoola, it's a good old favourite. Hoola's um, a, a bronzer. So you don't need to go out and buy expensive um, contour palettes with all different colours in. Um, you can get the same effect with a bronzer, as long as it's a matte bronzer, not too glittery and shiny. Um, yeah, I mean, Hoola for me um, is quite a good colour. You can get a lighter shade in it, so it just depends on your colour. But if you find a bronzer that's your colour, that's matte, you should be able to contour with it fine. So this is a contour brush by um, Real Techniques that I love. It's quite a good shape, um, just fits really nicely in the areas that I need to use it. So where to contour? So my face is fairly oval shaped face anyway. Um, so I'm going to do it as it would say in the diagram of, you know, the thing that you buy if you were to buy a contour kit. However, I'm a bit, little bit like, why should we all look the same? Why should we all have an oval shaped face? Um, if you've got a square jawline and that's your beautiful main feature, why should you shade it all away? Just because society says you should have an oval shaped face. So I'm very, I love it on the cheeks. I think it's really um, effective on your cheeks mostly. Again, if you contour down the size of your nose, if you've got a big nose, that's going to accentuate your nose. So avoid it. Um, and obviously you, you can go like around the, the edges of the, the forehead as well. It's all that kind of giving you the oval shaped face. So for me, you know, the diagram in the pot does suit my face because it's oval anyway. Um, so I'll show you where I'm putting it, but it's not going to suit everybody and it depends on your face shape. So when in doubt, the cheeks look good. But, you know, if you've got a big nose, avoid that as well. So where it goes. So where you naturally suck your cheeks in. I'm using a powder. You can get creams, you can get sticks. Um, they're a little bit trickier. The powder is probably the easiest thing. So it goes in this area. And what I would do is don't go too low. So keep it in this area. You can add a little bit at a time. 
don't just have like a line either so you can apply it like that first but almost do little circular movements and blend it upwards a bit can you see where that's going always looks so different in the mirror i'm looking into what it does in front of me okay so i can see that in there so i think you can see it too okay so you can Add a bit at a time, just blend it softly. If you feel like you've done, or you're like, oh my God, I've got too much and you can't blend it. Go back to, um, you know, your foundation brush or powder brush. It hasn't got to have anything on it and you can just sort of buff the edges a little bit. So don't be scared of it. So I'll do the other side. Now, a lot of the, um, the younger generation now tend to not like blusher so much. They do more contour, um, highlight, and just go with that. More of a bronzy sort of look, which is fine. It suits them. They look gorgeous. Um, but I still like to use a bit of blusher. I'm a bit old school. I like to have a little bit of pop of colour in my cheeks. So I am going to show you a blusher today and where you'd put it with a contour. Okay, so can you see where, where I've put that? And my blusher will blend... That top bit there as well. And then a bit down the side of my nose. So just down the side. And that side. I don't like to go too much, but okay, you can see where that goes. Around the forehead. Another way to do it naturally is to kind of do this sort of three shape. So it's kind of like, see where it would be that sort of shape there. If you're just going to do it really quick and easy. And then to chisel the jawline. Or if you're a bit chubs down here, you can just shade that away. It just helps you get a little bit more chisel down there. Okay, so that's kind of where you'd put contour for an oval shaped face. Um, so blusher, I'm going to go for today, NARS Orgasm. I love this one. So NARS Orgasm, it's a good old favourite. You might know it. it's a lovely kind of corally pink with like a goldy sparkly undertone, which is really pretty. Um, I'm going to build the colour, but where to put it? I'm going to go on the apples of my cheeks. Not too close to my nose. My rule, two finger spaces away, so not too close. I'm taking it up a little bit. So it's kind of, so you've got the contour here and then the colour's going just above it. If you're more mature, um, it's actually really good to take your blusher that little bit higher anyway. And it just gives that kind of lifting effect if your blusher's that little bit higher. So yeah, don't go too low with it. Just make sure it's up that little bit higher. I always finish a video and they go, oh, I should have said that. So I'm trying to remember a few more bits. I should make a list, <laughs> little notes down here to remind me to say things. Too much to say, it's a problem. And you can build the colours, you know, build as much as you want. For a night out, um, blush is one of those things that really disappears on your face. And in photos, it really disappears. On camera, it really disappears. So like, I look at myself <clears throat> in the mirror and I think, oh my God, I've got loads on. But I know I need to put a fair amount on <clears throat> to show you. Otherwise, it's not going to show up very well. So and it's the one thing with my bride. I do their makeup and then um, they get dressed in their wedding dresses and you see the whole look and I think, because the dress just washes them out, blusher is always that one thing that you need more of. So I'm always chasing them around, topping up their lips and putting more blusher on. So yeah, until the whole look comes together sometimes, you can't sort of see how much you need, but a good pop of color on your blusher, you can't go wrong. It just makes you look so much more alive. Okay. So that's me blusher and then um highlighters you get so many again so many out there 
uh, it's hard to um, to choose. Sometimes you get powder forms, you get liquid little droplets. Um, Iconic's a really popular one for that. It's beautiful. You get little cream sticks, um, illuminating liquids. There's so much out there. Me personally, I prefer powders. Uh, I don't mind a cream if I'm just sort of dabbing it on. Excuse me, if I'm just dabbing it on areas, but um, I prefer a powder. So I do love Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow is a really popular contour and highlighter kit. Mine's actually practically all gone, so I'm not going to open it. <laughs> but they come in two colours. It's about 50 quid, but it is amazing. It looks nothing when you open it anyway, but when you've got it on your face, it is beautiful. So it's got a, a contour for doing the where I've done the contouring and the highlighter is beautiful on the skin. Um, Smashbox do quite a few little palettes as well. But I tend to, these have got like three different colours in. One's um, really sparkly, like dip, dipping your head in a glitter pot, which is a bit too much for me. Um, so I tend to just find the one colour that I like. You get little Becca's, um, this is lovely actually, a liquid one. That's another nice one. But my favourite that I've found so far, that I'm going to keep going back to for a while, is Becca Champagne Pop. So I bought a palette at Christmas which has got various um, highlighters and blushes, you can use these on lips, cheeks and eyes, but Champagne Pop, you can buy it on its own, it's this one here, it's lovely like for a warmer tone like me, it's slightly goldy, like just a warm gold, it's not too gold, so it does suit most people, um, it comes in two sizes, that size when you buy it individually is about £15, but the bigger size, I've chucked the packaging now, it's about sort of this size, um and that's 30 however my one of those broke probably because i'm always transporting my makeup in and out um but i was a bit annoyed same with my film star bronze and glow at charlotte tilbury i broke that within two weeks as well it was just crumbly i was using it for ages so yeah i sometimes get a bit miffed if i've spent like 30 pound on a product and it's broke straight away so i've decided next time i'm just going to buy the 15 pound ones and just do it that way but um, for you if you're not transporting it it's going to last you anyway so so where to put the highlighter I'm going to go on top of the blusher now right on the top of this cheekbone I want to see a little bit here as well but mostly on the top a little bit down my nose cupid's bow and you can use a little bit on your eyelids as well so I'm going to show you where that goes but it's such a beautiful colour a little bit on that area but mostly on this top cheekbone you see that? Do the other one. But a powder is just so easy to use. So if you're unsure with liquids and you know you're worried about moving all the foundation you just put on, just uh, get a powder. A little bit on the end of your nose, down the centre is quite pretty. Again, if you've got a big nose, that's probably not a great thing to do. A little bit on your cupid's bow it's quite pretty and then i'm just going to take a little bit on my eyelids because i've got nothing on my eyes today anyway okay so that's a, a bit of a step-by-step -step on your base um you know again if i was going out before i did all the contour blush and highlight i would have done another coat of foundation um just to make sure it stayed put really well at this point now, I'm just going to double check under my eyes again. So I'm just going to do a little bit. I mean, I've not done any eyeshadow, so it's not overly important. But I'm just going to double check that. Just pat it. Just to make sure they're nice and bright. I'm going to get a little bit more setting powder now, so that's brightened my eyes up a bit more. Get a little bit more of a setting powder just to finish it off. A little bit of lip gloss because why not? This is a Becca one. Got 
got stuff on my lip. It's like a little menthol one. Got a bit of a tingle to it. And then your fixing spray, this is the best one really that I've found. I keep going to buy other ones and still end up going back to this one. And people on other counters actually still talk me into going back to this one rather than selling me their own, which is quite nice. So Urban Decay All Nighter comes in two sizes. Um, just for keeping your makeup on longer, it's a great one for a night out um, or for a special occasion. I always use it on my brides. And customers so yeah you just spritz it on that's it good to go and that will last all day so I hope I've given you a few tips um, let me know if you've got any questions and yeah have a good day happy Friday <laughs>